Dang it, you hear that squealing? It's either the feed wagon or me dying inside a little bit. The plug. Could just keep going, but I suppose I don't want to have to replace a belt later today. Not the best way to start the morning. Ooh, big old chunk. That calf says my mom's hungry. Work faster. Right on. Hey, good morning. Smile for the camera. Teeth. <laughs> Doesn't look like we had anything new. We're starting to slow down. We have, I think we're at least three fifths done with Kevin. Thanks for joining us today. We got a lot going on. We got a vet coming out. We're gonna get up our heifers that are about a year old right now. So a year from now, they'll be calving and most of them will probably be done calving a year from now. So we're gonna run those through and we're also gonna do some tractor work later in the video. So be excited for that. What we're doing today with these heifers is Bangs vaccinating, which is a vaccine for brucellosis. I actually wrote a short paper on brucellosis when I was in college. And then we're also pelvic measuring them, making sure that they're gonna be big enough and mature enough to calve in about 10, 11 months. We got the Brant 1547 ready to go and we got some fertilizer filled in that semi. Yesterday we did the first hay land, our bigger hay land. Shot some fertilizer out there with the Wilmer spreader and the John Deere tractor. And today, later, we're gonna be doing some more of that. When I came outside, it was a pretty chilly 22 degrees, especially since three, four days ago, it was 81 degrees. But the high today is 62-ish, so that's gonna be, that's gonna be warm. I'm gonna be feeling good in that weather. Excited to use the hydraulic chute. It's been, it's been at least a month since we worked some critters. I'm sure some of you guys can feel that. One of the most uncomfortable things about farming. Ground hay in the boot, stuck to the sock. That might be a new baby. What the heck? Hey, calf. I'm not your mother. It's gonna follow me right out the gate. Buddy, quit. What do you think they're saying? Where's my baby? Hmm. That's what they're saying. Where are my good perlets? You wanna go side? She don't know what she wants. Ellie, you ready to help pull? Come on, grab on, grab a hold. I thought you was the farm dog. Jeff, it looks like, looks like our little uh, makeshift shade fell down. That's sad. So the vet's gonna be showing up here any minute. Just so you guys understand, if you've never heard of the bacteria brucellosis abortus, obviously abortus is pretty close to abortion, which is basically what brucellosis causes. Once these cows come into contact with this disease, they basically abort pretty soon after that. And so it was a pretty big problem, I'd say maybe the 50s, I don't know, it was back before my time, but then after this vaccine came out and, and a lot of farmers started using it, we basically wiped it out and don't have to worry about it much anymore. And actually some places, they don't even make you uh, vaccinate. It's not mandated everywhere, but places like Wyoming and I think even West River, South Dakota, it's uh, they make you use this vaccine, correct? Maybe? I don't think West River, South Dakota. Come okay. on, Billy. It doesn't just affect cattle, it does affect like deer and maybe some moose and so it's out in there, it's out there in the wild. Did you say moose? I don't know, maybe. Moose? No, Meese? So we got some cattle to chase, vet should be showing up here any minute now. It's not your average picnic. No answer. That's what makes it different. No answer. Doesn't have like the right parts or something. 
and she's good. Okay, you can still let him down. So every once in a while, the dock reaches in there and you're like this thing's a little off. Little bit. In this one, she said no parts. Doesn't have the right stuff. Not gonna be able to breed. You're in my way. Yep, yep. So the ones that aren't gonna make it the cut, they just head to the other pen, and then they're just gonna hang out in the feedlot until they're at fat weight. She ain't got nothing. And that one was actually a twin, and they're twins. It's a one heifer and one bull. A lot of the times the heifer is a free martin or a queen. She doesn't have three parts. I feel like they were here last video. Yeah. That was I didn't want to put all number two diesel in until our mix was gone because I thought it might get cold yet. So then it went empty like two days later. So. Yeah, so they came here twice in one week. This one's a lucky girl. They just said she's got a big back end. That box over there, it says Fragile on it. Fragile? Must be Italian. Zappy Slappy, come on. A little bit more per second. Hey, hey. Okay, now shut it down a little bit. Okay, shut her. Did I ever tell you what the April Fool's joke always was for my dad to my mom? He wouldn't start calving until about April 10th, and every year he'd come in from chores and he'd say, We had twins on April Fool's Day, and mom says, Oh, how wonderful. And then April Fool's mm. did it every year. She fell for it every year. I don't think because, I think she knew it, but she was such a nice person that she just went along with it. I believe that. Yeah. Just what's in the alleys left? There's a couple in the tub. A couple in the tub. About six, seven more left. Hey, get off, get off your phone there. We're working cattle. We got a fellow with a trailer pulling up because we're actually selling the rest of these heifers that haven't calved. I think I've mentioned it a couple times. We are calving more critters than we have pastures for, so we didn't need to keep these heifers. Since the vet's here, they're actually gonna make sure that everything's healthy. These are ended up going to Nebraska. We're gonna put all these girls over in this pen, and then we gotta bring that middle pen back up so we can shove these ones out because they gotta run through that other pen. All those heifers measured up making sure that they're gonna be able to have a calf in the next year these two ended up one of them was a twin they didn't have the right parts so they weren't gonna be able to breed which is just fine they're just gonna be put in a feedlot and get fed out so we had eight heifers left to calve one of them ended up being open his name is Carter he's got a nice Chevy Woo! That's fancy looking. He's gonna be taking seven home. Seven sunny black Angus heifers with possibly some sunny black Angus bulls. Sounds like a good deal. Here was a bit in the way for the loadout. Dad, will you buy me a truck like that? Please? I have one in the garage pretty close. Huh? But you don't get it. Okay. <laughs> it ain't the same. It ain't the same. I don't know about you, but I feel like the end of calving heifers, you know, it kind of ceased pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. we just got done calving heifers. All, all of a sudden, we just had deer and cats. Turned out nice. I always have favorites, so. I don't like that. It's a John Deere one. We 
did this yesterday, do you think they'll find the gate easier today? Might be worse. Might be worse. Getting hot. Let's go, ladies. There's a snake in my mouth. Just gonna put those ones back into their middle pen. And it's lunchtime. Best time of the day. You ready? Just gotta chase the kettles. I guess Ellie didn't want to stick around to help me wheel this back in. Oh. Oh. You're the last calf out of a heifer this year. How does it feel? Oh, you know, I'm just out here drinking milk. It's been a pretty great last 24 hours I've been alive, loving life. This bedding's cool. And, uh, yeah, look at me do tricks. That's the best I got. Let's go. Ooh, come on. Come on. I just remembered. I got five more of my own heifers to cast, so we're not done no. having heifers. That is true, but I am done having <laughs> heifers. No. Man, got too many clothes. Too many clothes. I like where this is going. I think they like Mary Bertram. Is she the one? Does she like where this is going? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Some random viewer that a name just popped in my head. She's like, why me? About empty. Full head just a little. And we're off. Today we're gonna do one pasture and one hay land. What I call a hay land is just a field of grass that we're gonna cut for hay and bale. And so we got a 30 acre patch to do with that. And we're spreading urea today. So this is one of those building sites, this is called the Bow Place, it's where I think maybe in the last video, I no, two videos ago, no, maybe the last video, I overflowed a bunch of water. So we got some critters hanging out here, there's 18 pairs here, and then right to the east of them is where our 30 acres of grass hayland is, where we're going to be spreading today. And then the other patch we're going to be doing, it's about 60 or so acres right on the home place, which I can see all those trees is our home place. It's the pasture right around there. So that's going to be a good 60 acres, I believe. Ah, more gates. We got a set of gears and then we can also adjust how open that is. It's ground driven, so when the tires turn, it just feeds it out and then these spinners are going at 540 rpm chucking it out we're hitting 50 foot each pass so this is how we engage it engage the apron and we're ready to rock i got a set let's spread some fur right away also i like to make sure that my spinners are going which they are there's a belt in here that does fall off every once in a while so you want to make sure you're spreading it and not throwing a thin heavy line Gotta love me some auto steer. Woo! I kind of like fertilizing. You feel like you're getting a lot accomplished. We can do about 50 acres an hour, which is pretty decent. There's not too many jobs that you can get that much done in an hour, especially not harvest or planting. In the past, you can see this has been a wet spot, but we're, I can actually see I don't know if that's MoCo from Jeff cutting it or if it's fertilizer spreader from us spreading trying to get through here last year But there is some tracks in there. Well this year. It's pretty dang dry I think we're gonna have some smooth sailing caveat to that is maybe poor crops It's easy to get around when things are dry, but it's hard to raise a crop when it's dry It's so nice being out just in a tractor not having to wade through the mud or pull calves Last year at this time, Dad and I were kind of scrambling. Unlike this year, where we have all of our corn stalks already fertilized, ready for soybean planting, we didn't. We had a wet fall two years ago, so we couldn't get any of that done. So we were trying to do haylands, pastures, and all the bean stubble. 
or all the corn stalks getting ready for beans. We got about half of our fertilizing acres done already. Basically did that last year, last fall. Well, now I can see why they're breaking that hay feeder. You see that cow? She was standing on the frame. And there's a chunk of that frame where she was standing on, on the other side that was ripped off. And I bet you when she broke that off and her face hit the upper rack, she didn't learn her lesson. She's probably still doing it. Last pass. I cannot wait to come in here with a moco and mow all that grass, self-propel, self-propelled awesomeness. I hope you're looking forward to it too. It's gonna be a good time. Excuse me. Looks like Dad's pulling in with a couple bales, feed some hay. Oh, and I guarantee someone's gonna say, how can you spread that that toxic stuff with the cattle? Aren't they gonna eat it? Fun fact, so we're spreading urea, of course it's in a dry form. Some cattle feeders actually feed urea. They add it in with their uh, the rest of their ration. Uh, bovine rumens can actually utilize that. And so I guess if they do pick some of it up, it's not going to be a big deal. Gotta love an open gate. Done. Yeah, you're so tall. And handsome. <laughs> and handsome, he says. Look at here, guys. The boneyard's been started. <laughs> I don't know why, but in college, when there was like a a uh, party outside, the boneyard is where all the cans ended up in the middle. I don't know. It's that's just it's just one of them funny things. Boneyard. Every once in a while, like a month, two months ago, I saw a fox run around. I've, I haven't seen him in a while, I guess that's why. Rest, rest in peace, Mr. Fox. I was just always wondering, what, what did the fox say? All right, here's the last stuff we're doing today. And we're done. Oh, getting stiff. Yeehaw. Get the boneyard cleaned up. You just, you just dab yourself with the syringe? Well, it's sticking up in the air. Mm. Yeah. Fun fact, I forgot to mention earlier that uh, brucellosis vaccine we were given earlier. If you get stabbed with one of those needles, that's mm. a, I'm pretty sure that's alive and you actually gotta like go get antibiotics after that. So I got stabbed in the arm one time and we were given um, anthrax and that would have been bad, but I, it was the other syringe, not the other. <laughs> Yeah. Would you have died? Would you just been sick? Yeah. Anthrax is a pretty quick thing. Yeah. Choking, can't get there. Get stung by bees. Would I be here or not? Robbie would. Robbie would? You wouldn't have no sunny frames to watch if Dad would have poked himself with the wrong needle. I don't know. Nobody's claving. That's lame. If we get not many today, does that mean we get a lot more tomorrow? It did last week that one time. Maybe. We had like two one day and the next day we had six. Well, there weren't any new calves. Only had one today. Current calf count, 68 bulls, 63 heifers. We're knocking them down. We're getting close to the end. But it's gonna. there's going to be some stragglers and it's going to take, take a while. Take a few weeks, maybe months, huh? Or maybe we'll just do what we did with the heifers. Make it so it ends in a matter of minutes. Hope you enjoyed today's video. We'd like to see you next time, huh? Have a good one. Uh, have a good one. <laughs> <laughs>